Welcome to Dan's Talks. My guest today is Carl Johnson, who's uh, the coach of the Bridgehampton Killer Bees basketball team. And uh, there's a, an amazing story connected with him and this team. And we'll, I'll start by asking you, um, in your time as either a player when you were at the school or as a coach, have the Killer Bees won the state championship in basketball? Well, um, I graduated in 1980. I started playing varsity basketball, 77-78. Uh, so I started as a sophomore. And at the time, New York State had just reinstated the New York State championships. So it had been absent for about 49, 50 years. And so we officially were the first team not the only team to win that year, but we were the official first team to win the state title in 49 years. So that was kind of uh, very exciting for us to uh, be like the first team to ever do it after 49 years. I, I remember uh, I was here then and um, it was a midnight arrival from upstate where the final game was played. Do you remember against who? Uh, yes. Our first championship was against Lime High School up in the Rochester area, I believe, <laughs> Farm Town. And it was Farm probably and it was probably played up state, right? Played in Rochester. So the first three years of its existence was in Rochester. So they held it there because I think the organizer, the organizer of the state tournament and who really was pushing to have a state tournament back in New York were all from like that section. Rochester. Yes, so, so you came down in a bus, which is about as I, I went to the University of Rochester earlier than that. Okay. So I know that trip, it's quite long, it's six, seven hours. You, by the time you got down to the Hamptons, it was past midnight. And what was awaiting you at that hour, or one or two in the morning? What was going on? Uh, I think the whole town was there. We had the, we had the fire department, uh, Everyone was there, I think, in town just to celebrate us winning our, the first uh, the state championship. And it was so exciting. It's one of those things you'll never, ever forget. And I still, I think every one of those guys, the members of that team, just still talks about that, how exciting it was. You know, it was, it was unbelievable. So, so before we move on in this, uh, so you uh, were you born in Champton or Southampton and went to school here, and that's when you were playing, right? So, uh, I was born in North Carolina, and we moved up here when I was uh, nine years old. I was going into fourth grade at the time, uh, so I was a little country boy from uh, Elizabeth City, North Carolina. And uh, when we moved up here, I didn't expect to stay. <laughs> uh, but we ended up staying here. We had a lot of my mother's uh, siblings were here and established. And so we kind of basically we migrated here. And uh, she's, you know, at the time she thought it would be a better life for us and a better chance for us. And uh, I, I always resented it. But then as I got older and, and mature, and understood what the situation was. I truly appreciate that she did. At that time, um, um, people from the South were migrated up here to do the harvest for the potato farms. So right. that's probably what your dad uh, brought everybody up for, and you stayed. Like P.J., uh, um, Paul Jeffers, who uh, went on, you know, he's the president of the child care center now. Right. So... Um, you, you, did you know, you must have, I guess you were younger than him. In any case, the getting back to uh, basketball, um, since that time, how many state championships have occurred for this little school? So during my high school year, we won three in a row. We were the only team at the time to win three in a row. Even uh, the great teams of Mount Vernon didn't do that. They didn't do mm -hmm. that. We were able to accomplish that feat. And then... In the mid '90s, we won another three year, three in a row. So I I played on three in a row, and I coached three in a row. So, uh, so um, one of the interesting things about this is that the Bridgehampton School, which during that era uh, was about ninety percent African American, 
Um, had a gym that was not to standard size. It was a smaller uh, interior space that had been made into a basketball gym by, by I don't know, not a lot, maybe, what, five, ten feet, something like that. Lot, it was, uh, so you have to remember the school was built in 1933. So, yeah. you know, there was no corner three-point shots. You only could get it from either the top or the wing. So it kind of made us, it was an advantage to us. Plus, you all, you, as a, as a, the home team, we already knew the nicks and crannies of it. Teams will come in, and when we look at the team, and they see the size of the school, and they're like, their eyes are like just in amazement. And they're like looking at their coaches, like, how are we going to play in this thing? Now we already up 15, 20 points. Uh, it's very rare that you would come back from that deficit <laughs> in Bridgeham Gym. And I truly miss that gym. I really do. Yeah. All my play there. Uh, all now you have a regulation gym. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have, I, to, you yeah. have to fast break a little faster. Exactly. Exactly. A, a little, a little more. I th someone told me they thought that because the gym was shorter, it was the the team in practice would get used to really running back and forth a lot, much well, more than the teams. Well, I thought so. People say, "Oh, what are you going to do when you get to a regulation size gym?" And we're like, we continue to run and you know press. And I mean, the only difference was we had to react. We went from offense to defense. So that transition got us prepared for any gym that we would play in in the yeah. future. So that was a thing we could do. We could go from offense right to defense, right back to offense. And the only thing that our gym allowed us, besides us being like all over the court, was that um, we were able to get more possessions. So in a regulation side gym, say you get maybe as a team, you may get maybe 60, maybe seven possession in the game. And then Bridge Ham Gym, you get over 100, you know, 120, 130 possessions. You're talking about turnovers? Turnovers in the, in, in the fast paced game. So oh, some, I see. Instead of like, so I, I kind of equate it to this if, you can, if, if the audience can understand this. Instead of playing tennis where you have the long rallies, you're playing ping pong and it's a little <laughs> quicker. <laughs> so if you want to equate the two, that's how we looked at it. Yes, so then the other team must be must have had the feeling of being put back on their heels and blown off the court in some way. Yes, like I tell you, we watched their faces when they walked in and they're like trying to figure it out. By the time they figure it out, like I said, we up 15, 20, and basically there's no coming back from that one. So it was a lot of fun. And um and teams were intimidated because the crowds, each corner of the gym was filled with these the, the older men just sitting there talking and, it's, you know, you had the high school kids, you had the elementary kids, you had grades K through 12. Everybody's in that gym. There's nowhere to go. And, I, you know, sometimes our fans weren't the most polite because they were like, you know, the, the ref would tell the guy, the people to back up or move over so the guys can inbound it. And they're like, no, no. But they would do it for us. So I guess that's what they truly call a home court advantage. So. Uh, after high school, uh, how long was it before you started coaching the team? Uh, I was probably, so I went to college, came back. Uh, my coach that had coached me in high school asked me, uh, so I would say about nine years, eight, eight to nine years. So he saw me and we were having a discussion. He's like, well, will you be interested in coaching? And helping out, he was asking me to coach middle school basketball and then help the varsity coach at the time was John Niles. And I told him, I was like, I have no clue. I don't know anything about coaching. <laughs> and he said, uh, oh, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'll give it a shot, though. I have nothing to lose. I'll give it a shot. So I went there and I tell you, uh, the first thing I did after my first practice was call them up and I, and I said, uh, if I gave you any trouble or any attitude during my tenure under you, I truly apologize. Because, <laughs> I'm, you know, being a coach, you're dealing with 12 different attitudes. Yeah. Being a player, you only have to deal with one attitude, and that's the head coach. Yeah. So that was the difference. And I was like, oh, I see. I see. So... <laughs> And then um, it was, to me, 
um, he said, well, you just have to be organized and let the team know that you're in control and you know exactly what you're doing. So that was what I took from that. Yeah. Well, the later the later state championships under your coaching were they more special to you, or do you, or were they same, or did you feel that that it was more of was it different than how the earlier ones were? You when you were just a player, as far as you're concerned, the 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 ones that stood out to me, my championships. Now, as a player, the first one is always going to be D one. I don't care what noise. It's like you know your first childhood you know, your first high school sweetheart it's always going to she's going to always be special she's always going to be a part of your life my senior year which we weren't expected to win was also special uh but that uh coaching those kids and allowing them to experience what i experienced was even more gratifying to me that was like the ultimate they see their faces and see you know because they hear about it they heard about it. They, they, you know, they just kept hearing about it, hearing about it. But to, for them to actually experience it and seeing that look on their face was amazing. So I would say, besides me being on the first one, the uh, winning one as a coach was right up there with at the top, right up there with the top. So how how are the how's the team doing the this year? Is there are you a, a good record? Or are you having a bad year? Or what's going on? So um, we lost four players from last year. So coming into this year, and first of all, you have to understand, I've never coached these, this team before. I have no, not I, they know me, but they don't know me. So well, explain, had, explain that. What do you mean? Because you so, just came back. You just came back. Came back after six years. So how, I, how, how long before you retired? You were coached for what? Many, many years. 26 years I coached for 26 years. And then you retired. Years. Then I retired from coaching, and then I decided uh, once the the AD came and asked me would I be willing to come back for a year or two, I said okay, let's give it a shot. Um, this team I've seen them grow up, I've seen them play, but I've never coached them. I see. They know a lot about me, and I know a lot about them from a distance. So yeah. it was, you know, in my first meeting, I said, well, it's going to be some ups and downs. You guys, I'm going to grow to learn you. I have to get to know you. You have to get to know me. And we're going to have, if we listen to each other and we respect each other, we should be pretty, we, you know, we should be successful. So, uh, of course, a lot of things are on there. You know, every we just want to win a state title. And that's what they their whole goal is. Uh, mm -hmm. But we lost four players from last year. So we are a very young team. I, I start four sophomores and one senior. So we're where I, matter of fact, they are kind of surprising me and they're doing better than I expected. You know, I didn't think we were going to come around this quickly, but we are doing very well. We're in second place in conference play. Uh, uh, we're eight and four, I believe, which is, you know, better than I truly expected. I thought we were going to hover around 500, but we're doing, we're right there. And I think we have a great shot of, winning at least the counties you know so or in the conference what um what's next oh oh i meant to ask you one other question was uh in the interval after you retired did you uh do some other thing to see how how it would go um so i i still i stayed with basketball in I, in the sense of like I was doing like personal workouts with kids that would come out from the city or our local kids, work, I would do a workout. If they call me up and say, coach, I want to get in the gym, I would do that. Uh, then I, I've been doing some projects. I've been volunteering my time down at the child care center during the summer. I do a little basketball for maybe an hour, two hours in the summer. Uh, so I, I've kept busy that way uh, with, you know, Bonnie asked me to be the athletic director of the child care center once I completely retired from uh, Bridgehampton School. So, and then one of the projects was to build a pool and a, a little gym there. So yeah, that's the plan. I think we'll do it. I'm on the board of the child care center. And one of the interesting things about it, I've been on the board for almost 20 years. And after about eight or nine, you do what you can. And I had some guys come and they had, uh, 
uh, paved my driveway, which had been a at home, which I paid for. I said, with this basketball court, Scott, that they have, it's an outdoor court. I said, uh, could you please uh, make a donation and just repave that because, and uh, th- because of it, just people are going to trip over what's there now and so forth. So they said yes, and they went South Fork asphalt. I'll give them the credit for this. Uh-huh. So they get it done, and I go out there with the ball and I start running down the court, and I go, wait a minute, and I'm thinking about it, and the court is too long. The court's about <laughs> six feet too long. It's too long. <laughs> I said, why didn't I ask him? I said, why didn't I ask them to put the stripes in better, you know, and move it around? But oh well, it's what it is. And it's funny you said that because last summer or last year, last fall, we we repainted. I had some of the kids from the current varsity team and the, some that graduated came down there and we repainted the um, the uh, f- um, courts. Yeah. And then looking at it, I'm like, yeah, this is too long. So I asked a couple of my friends around that I know. I was like, well, if I'm going to do this project, I'm going to do it right. So we're going to try to get the courts at regulation size <laughs> and then give, of course, the other part of it to uh, Ellen, Ellen Snow. I think, I think you know her. So yeah. she expand her garden part. So I'm, I'm looking at all those things and this, a lot of things are on my plate right now. I, I'm just gonna have a checklist. And one thing I said, baby steps, one step at a time, we'll get there. So the next object is, the next project is to get that court at regulation size. Yeah, I think so. so. Well, you've, uh, were you, do you, do you think you did in, the, in your career here what you really wanted to do? I, I, I really did. That's why I, I retired the first time. I said, um, I, I done, I think, everything I could possibly do as a coach and as a mentor to a lot of the kids. And then when the opportunity came back, not, not that I really want to step away from coaching, but I was like, you know, I did enough. Let me get, I'm done. And then now I'm back. My fire is still burning. <laughs> and uh, I think I, I, I have a lot to give, but to yeah. a thing is just to help these kids accomplish something on the court and off the court. And well, that's what I'm back here for. And that's my main goal right now. Thank you for being on the podcast. I've enjoyed talking to you a lot. Thank and you. Dave. Appreciate it. We'll, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye. I love, and I always have to tell you this. I never gave you this compliment, but I always love that iconic fedora. <laughs> I love the hat. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.